What a night it was in San Diego. Turning it on at a new venue, Snapdragon Stadium. Of course, at the beginning of the inaugural Super Motocross World Championship, Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship, as we welcome you to the SMX Insider post-race show. And the theme, pretty simple. Champions flourishing. Jed Lawrence in the 250 class, repeating what he did at the season opener at A1. And not one champion, but two. Eli Tomac doing exactly the same in the 450 class. Yep, the guys who are number one, number one in San Diego as well. Welcome to the show, folks. Lee Diffie and the greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael. Hey, new venue, huge crowd, great night. Oh, it was a lot of fun. The crowd was electric and I love seeing, I love this stadium, beautiful place. The track was great, a fantastic night of racing. All right, let's get right to it. 250 highlights. And uh, the theme was, as we mentioned, champions, the champion in Jet Lawrence. Yep, a little bit of encouragement. Wasn't the perfect day. He did have a little hiccup earlier where he had a fall uh, in qualifying practice. He got straight to it. He knew who the main contenders were, but at the drop of the gate, look out for number 18. Look at that start, but carnage. Levi Kitch is number 43. He goes down, hits hard. He won't finish the race. Man, those guys are just going everywhere. But man, the number 18 at Jet Lawrence making it happen. Superb night. Wilson Todd and Mitchell Harrison were the other two to go down. Turn one, lap one, and here we have the factory Honda HRC pilot just scooting away, but all the action happened behind him. Yep, right there, he goes up the inside, number 48 of Cameron McAdoo getting by Enzo Lopes from the number 56, Club MX Yamaha, and then look at my man, RJ Hampshire, making the pass on Phil Nicoletti. Nicoletti. And there were lots more passes to come because Hampshire was far from done. Enzo Lopes, I got you too. Yeah, he does. And really hated to see RJ not get a great start because I truly feel he had the speed to win tonight. And man, what a command pass for the lead, minimizing the damage here tonight. Did a lot of hard work. Up front though, it was cruise control for Jet Lawrence. He had never raced in San Diego before. And he's got the perfect record at Snapdragon Stadium. Yep, same podium as A1, by the way. <laughs> as we take you to the results, it's pretty obvious who stood on the podium. A little bit of frustration from Cameron McAdoo, but let's highlight some others, like Enzo Lopes. Styles Robertson had a great comeback. I gotta tell you, like you said, Enzo Lopes, incredible ride, was fast all day long, great heat race. Boom, nice finish. There you have it. How about that? Will anybody be able to catch Jet Lawrence? Let's talk more 250s with Daniel Blair. Well, another incredible night for Jet Lawrence, and this is starting to get out of hand early. And I want to focus on the starts because that's where he has been pretty much automatic in the main events. And look, if you're the best guy in the class, the competition needs to get in front of you in the main event and just make it more difficult. Put him in some uncomfortable situations in the pack and hope that you get a little bit of help. But if he's going to get starts like that every time, I don't really know if he's beatable. I don't think anyone has the actual top end speed to get him. And he's executing his way through lappers perfectly. I mean, I really think that the gate right here where I'm standing is going to be the deciding factor enough if Jet Lawrence wins a race or not. So uh, the competition's got to figure out something, maybe start next to him get in his head, do something, get the guy behind you, and then see if he could do it from there. But uh, pretty incredible. I do want to make a comment on Levi Kitchen. I thought he had a somewhat of a breakthrough today in that heat race. He looked comfortable. Remember, he's still early in his 250 career. And to go down like that on the start and not get a chance to show what he's got in the main event, I I've just gutted for him because I think that the more reps that he gets, the more he's going to show that he's special, and he just didn't get that chance tonight. And uh, final thought from me is Enzo Lopes. I said it before the gate drop. This guy is... People are looking. I mean, teams are talking and asking questions. I got people asking me questions. How old is he? What's his stat? I mean, this guy is emerging right now in this 250 class, and there's a lot of people that are going to be watching him close all season. Everything we've seen so far has been incredible. We'll see what he does throughout the rest of the season in a Triple Crown format next week in Anaheim. But uh, Enzo Lopes, he is super surprising this year. And maybe we shouldn't be. He was fifth overall in points last year, so maybe we shouldn't be this surprised. But it's been Fantastic. So, yeah, Jet Lawrence, somebody get in front of him, make him work for it, because if he keeps getting the starts, I really, truly don't think he's beatable. Guys.
Well, that's the point, Daniel, isn't it? We don't know yet because he hasn't been pressed yet this yeah. season anyway, right? Yeah, and, and the hard part about trying to beat a guy like Jet Lawrence is every part of his game is good. He's smooth. He's calculated. He doesn't make the same mistake twice. I mean, everything he does is, is just right. He makes If he makes any mistakes, most of the time it's in practice, so he fixes it. But if you're RJ Hampshire, you have to stay positive. Listen, he's done the best he can do. He's got two seconds. I, I, I see that there's smoke. Is it going to be hard for RJ Hampshire or someone to beat Jet Lawrence? Of course it is, but I'm staying positive for RJ Hampshire. If he can get a good start, follow Jet, see where Jet is better, and try to catch a toe and find that speed and make the adjustment to run with him. Do you like the fact that next up is a triple crown, that triple crown format, which so, for instance, say if Hampshire doesn't have a good one in the first, he then has second and a third to go right. after Lawrence. Well, you get, yeah, you get two and three more chances. And I, I, I just love the triple, triple crown format. I think that you have to be on your game, a, a game. It puts you in a pressure situation and you have to perform all three main events. So a quick reminder, while we're here on the SMX Insider Post Race Show, I want to talk about the regular weekly show. You can join our very own Daniel Blair, Jason Wygant, the king of the calculator, the stats guru, <laughs> Clinton Fowler. And there's always at least one big interview, one special guest on the show. You can catch it on, the, uh, on supermotocross.com, the YouTube channel, and that's every week, the SMX Insider Show, Thursday, every week check it out and of course you can always go back and watch previous episodes as well uh see and myself have been on there it's great it's just a good top up every yep, week right it is it, it just is. keeps it rolling gets us yeah absolutely gets you rolling and something to look forward to for the next weekend as well guess what you can look forward to now we're going to talk 450s because the question was after a one new bike new yamaha for eli tomac is anybody bigger on it be able to catch this guy. It's kind of the same theme with Jet Lawrence. Right, but I got to tell you, it was a lot harder, I feel like, from a speed perspective for Eli Tomac this weekend than it was at the season opener in Anaheim. And the reason that I say that is because I feel that Cooper Webb gave Eli Tomac probably all that he wanted. He lost toe a little bit, fell out to about three seconds behind Eli Tomac, but then he was able to close up the gap right there at the end of the race. And I just... Man, you cannot sleep on Cooper Webb. The guy is a warrior. He knows how to win championships. He has the same amount of titles and Supercross sure. as Eli Tomac does. All right, let's not talk about it. Let's go. Let's have a look at it. Let's take you to the highlights of the 450 main here in San Diego. Before we get to the main, let's show you this. Chase Sexton in his heat race. Lap one, he goes down and gets hammered by Aaron Plessinger there is the yeah. damage that was done. Yeah, I'd never seen anything like that, and there was nowhere for Aaron Plessinger to go, but just a, a night that Chase Sexton is definitely going to want to forget. He got to the main event via the last chance qualified, drop of the gate in the main, and Adam C. and Cirillo got a phenomenal start and led for the first few laps. Yeah, I love seeing that from Adam C. and Cirillo, and just to get out there and log in laps. Fantastic. And then Malcolm Stewart comes out of that corner, gets off balance just a little, and then he jumps on the tub blocks, goes down, and it's a, it, the rest of the night really doesn't get any better. Unfortunately, that's two main events oh. in a row where Malcolm has gone down. Chase Sexton went uh, down with an altercation with Barsha. I mean, Barsha just came in there and just absolutely demolished him. So, Adam C. and Cirillo's time in the lead while he enjoyed it. It didn't last for as long as he'd hoped as Cooper Webb made that lead. Well, that was, a that pass. Yeah, that was a fantastic pass, but then you see the defending champion, number one, Eli Tomac, or that Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing Machine, a command for pass. Let me tell you something, it ain't easy to pass Cooper Webb. And he made that look pretty darn good. Ken Rocks, and there's Jason Anderson dropping his Kawasaki while he was in a certain podium position. What a shame for the man who chased Eli Tomac all the way last year. And then, towards the end of the race, after the lead was blown out to like three and a half seconds, almost four, at the end of it, Tomac said that he found it tough getting through traffic and Webb caught him. Yeah, it was getting really hard. And then as the race gets down to the wire there, you can see him taking the checker flag. It's hard to move around on the track, but nevertheless, this is going to be a great battle for races coming up, Lee. Remind the folks how many uh, Supercross main event wins you have. Well, I have 48. 48. That was win number 46. That's right. For Eli Tomac. Here he comes. So it was a Tomac-Webb-Barsha 
podium. And then Ken Roxon backs it up with back-to-back -back top fives. Yeah, an improvement for both Farsha and Roxon based on last weekend. It was great to see those guys up front. Let's check in with JT. Another round and another second place for Cooper Webb, but this one felt a little bit different. And I'll tell you why. I'm standing in the whoops for good reason, because coming into 2023, all of the questions surrounding Cooper Webb were, could he get through the whoops good enough to challenge for a championship? It really felt like it held him back throughout all of 2022 with a brand new KTM platform. And tonight, we got that answer. He really stepped up to the plate and was able to match Eli Tomac lap for lap in the whoops. Did he get the win? No. But I think it sent a clear signal that this is not 2022 anymore, and they have that motorcycle figured out. So as we move into the Triple Crown, Webb really looks like he's firing on all cylinders, and I think he smells blood in the water a little bit. Now, having said that, Tomac has been unstoppable thus far. He's won every race that he's entered. But if you're looking for confidence, if you're looking for a reason to be excited about Cooper Webb, I think you got it tonight. I asked. Red Bull KTM team manager Ian Harrison earlier today, I said, have you, have you got your old rider back? Yeah. And he said, I think so. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. He's certainly on a roll. There's no doubt about that. So positive signs ahead for Cooper Webb. But let's turn the page and let's talk about Chase Sexton because it was quite an eventful night tonight oh, because this guy won in San Diego a year ago. He, yeah. whew, he I mean, got... Just had this yeah, rough start. Yeah, I mean, you just see that, and just, I mean, that that is all on him, you know? He just gets a little sideways through the whoops, goes down, then gets ran into, and then it just really snowballed from that point on. And you look at Chase Saxton, and, and he was a favorite to win this championship. He really was. I wouldn't say that he was a favorite over the defending champ, Eli Tomac, but he has the pedigree to go out there and win, and he just keeps putting himself in bad position. You go back to the season opener, he made a couple of mistakes, then the rhythm section allowed Eli Tomac to get by him. Then here he goes down on, him, uh, on his own and the heat race gets ran into. And then, you know, he gets an okay start from a bad, a bad starting point. And then he gets taken out by Justin Barsha. Okay, but how all that starts, Lee, is he went down in the start. Uh, or yeah. in, in the heat in the race. Heat. So you put yourself behind the eight ball right out of the gate. So he's got to iron out that stuff. Now he's way, he, I mean, he's he's back in points. Mm -hmm. Still for the 450 guys, they have a lot of races to make up from, from bad races. I mean, he hasn't had anything detrimental, but he needs to start running up front with Cooper Webb and Eli Tomac if he wants to be a true contender. I want to say well done to the Honda HRC mechanics oh, and crew yes, yes. who got his bike fixed very quickly. That's right, the unsung heroes, great guys. Uh, they don't get enough credit. All right, how can you watch the next round of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship? Well, it's as simple as on your screens right now. Coverage as always on Peacock for Race Day Live. And then you've got coverage on Peacock and then also on CNBC uh, for a re-air as well. So don't forget about the uh, SMX uh, post-race show, which will have all of that coverage as well. One last time before we say farewell, let's check back in with the guys. Here's Daniel. Yeah, I'm really excited for next weekend because of the Triple Crown format. I mean, these first two rounds with Tomac and Webb going 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, it's... It's looking too stable for my liking. So throw a triple crown in there. Anaheim's are always pretty wild. And Cooper Webb seemed pretty confident on the podium. He even brought up the triple crown. You got to remember his first win ever in Supercross was in Anaheim at a triple crown at round three. I know that's a lot of funny tie-ins, but it works for the riders sometimes. So he seems motivated. And Eli Tomac, as long as his starts stay the way they are, he should be in good shape. But three main events in one night, that's very difficult. A lot of things can happen. So for me, it's all about the triple crown. Mix it up, guys. Make this fun because the two champs are doing too good for my liking at this point. Just to echo what you're saying, Daniel, the triple crown changes so much. And I think if you're one of these guys that are looking, how do we, you know, knock Eli Tomac and knock Jet Lawrence off their game, I think it presents a, a little bit of an opportunity because the races are so much shorter. Both of them are so seasoned. And if you give them 15 or 20 minutes to figure out a race, they're going to get to the front. These shorter races change the game a little bit. If they get bad starts, maybe a guy like RJ Hampshire could steal a win. So I think you have to be opportunistic when approaching both of those guys. And if they give you any room at all, you have to maximize it.
We spoke in the in the broadcast about having that unexpected weekend off last weekend in yeah. Oakland due to the um, just the horrendous weather conditions and the and the flooding and and um, you know for safety reasons that that race was pushed back to February 18. So now that we've had the San Diego race, go back to Anaheim. For, it's going to feel normal again, isn't it, for the guys? So maybe that some of these storylines that we're all discussing can unfold because they're back into the cadence of a, of a normal, so to speak, season. Yeah, that's right. They're going to start getting the ball rolling here. But I just look at that 450 class, and Eli Tomac and Cooper Webb are really starting to establish them th themselves. I know we're only a couple races into the championship, but those guys are seasoned veterans. They're multi-time champions at all levels. Levels. They know what they're doing, and when they're running up front, like Daniel said, uh, this early, it's really scary. And the other guys, the Chase Sexons, the Andersons, the Roxons of the world, they better get their stuff together yeah. because if not, it's going to be too late. So uh, it's always fun wherever we go in the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship. When, when you come to a new venue, it's pretty special. This crowd tonight were fantastic. Thanks to everybody for coming out and watching. It was an awesome experience for all of us to remember. Some would like to forget certain parts of it like that. But it was a champion night for Jet Lawrence, for Eli Tomac, the guys who came in with a target on their back. They ran away from all the competition. Next up, it's off to Anaheim, the return to Angel Stadium. And it's as close as next weekend. See you soon.